Hello, everyone, and welcome to another MASA webinar. Today's topic is going to be equipment for the production of multicolored concrete products. My name is Corey Barglin, joining you from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Uh, just a short tidbit about myself. I've been representing MASA for the past five years as an area sales manager responsible for the Canadian market. Also find me traveling around the United States, uh, working on some different projects in that front. Uh, traveling at least in a typical year, but happy to be joining you here today in a virtual format. Um, see a, a good number of producers that I recognize over the, the invitation list that are coming from North America. Also see that we have a lot of different demographics represented here today. Uh, so whether you're in Latin America, Europe, North Africa, the Middle East, we hope that you find today's presentation uh, exciting and of value to you. And with that being said, let's just jump into it. Uh, today's presentation is gonna be broken down into three different segments. We're gonna start with the mixing plant, gonna move on to some different color blending equipment, and we'll finish with some auxiliary equipment specific to the Mossa concrete block making machine. That's gonna help put some finishing touches on these multicolored blends. Okay, high precision mixing plants, the cornerstone of high quality products. So as manufacturing experts, you're familiar that output is a function of input. So concrete is getting made in the mixer and it's getting formed in the machine. So today let's take a look at Moss's philosophy for creating highly homogenized base mix and face mix concrete. So here's just some high level technical information. We see we have a range of mixers on the main mix side of things, ranging from a 1500 liter output all the way up to your 3000 liter output. Uh, for your different producers, if you're primarily a hardscape producer and you need a lower output, um, all the way for those producers who are running lightweight aggregates and need those higher output volumes. Um, and then, of course, we have our specialty S350 mixer that's specific for face mix, face mix production. Let's take a look at a little bit more information about the technologies contained within. So we start with the main mix mixers. You'll notice all of Moss's uh, base mix mixers are gonna be a planetary mixer. They're equipped with a, a sample port down below there. That's gonna allow your operators to take convenient and safe samples during the production day. Uh, some producers like to take some samples at the mixer throughout the day, bring it down to their laboratory, make sure that they're getting consistent results. Uh, you can do that safely and securely with the Moss and mixer range. Um, the drives have been equipped on top of the mixer now for the last several years. Um, that gives you a little bit more visual inspection for your maintenance purposes. Also makes it easier to, to maintain this equipment since it's out in the open. And then these are going to be equipped with a smooth start and an automatically controlled shutdown. If any blockages, if any damages uh, were to happen, then it's going to automatically stop that and help to protect the drivetrain. So here we open up the mixer. You'll realize that it opens up nice and wide. That's thanks to the two hinged doors on each side here. Uh, that's gonna give you a little bit better access for your personnel to get in there to either clean out the mixer or else perform maintenance work. Attached to the mixer stars, you're gonna see these flow optimized mixing shovels. That's gonna help reduce material and concrete from sticking onto there, getting a more homogenized mix. On the outside here, there's two scrapers. That's gonna be rotating around, helping to clean out the side of the mixer, uh, helping to pretend, pr protect uh, future batches from being contaminated from your previous batches. And then here we see a mechanical scraper. This is serving two different functions. Uh, it's gonna to help to accelerate the discharging of the concrete after the mixing time has been completed. And it's also continually gonna be rotating around here you see this device right here. This is where the moisture probe is going to be stored. Uh, so this scraper is going to continually come across, cleaning off the top of the, the moisture probe, making sure it's getting an accurate reading and sending it to the MOSA control system. Uh, we'll touch a little bit more on that topic in some subsequent slides. But first, let's take a look at the S350 mixer. This one, of course, is much smaller in size to, to be able to handle your finer aggregates and your smaller batches. You'll notice it's on an angle that's going to be a 20 degree angle. And what that does is help to separate the mix from the mix transportation system. So as it's rotating around, it's going to be throwing the mix into the spinner on the inside. We'll take a look at that in a second, but that helps to prevent cement balling and color balling. 
it's particularly advantageous in your larger format slab production. Uh, if you take a look at uh, a hole and paver, which is universal around the world, if you get a cement or a color ball on the top of one of those products, uh, it's not a huge deal to QC it out on the wet or on the dry side line. Uh, but when you get to some of your larger format slabs, uh, especially some products that are taking up almost the entire production palette, and you have a great product right there, and you have a little cement ball, a little cement or a little color ball that forms on the top of the product surface. Um, that's a lot of raw material that you're wasting. That's a lot of square feet or square meter, however you're, you're measuring your output that you need to throw away. So this mixer was engineered specifically to overcome that obstacle. Also equipped with the smooth start, the automatically controlled shutdown. Once again, helping to pro, uh, protect the drives in case of any jamming. So here we just take a look at the inside of the mixer. Again, this highly wear resistant spinner. This is going to be spinning counter current to the mixing pan. Uh, we'll see that take place in an animation in a second here. You also see the lining to this mixer. It's going to be made out of stainless steel. That's going to help to protect, protect um, concrete from sticking onto the side of the mixer. Something that's particularly advantageous in your multicolor blends, especially if you're going from a light color blend over to a dark color blend making sure that those batches aren't being contaminating your future batches. So as the mixer trough spins around here, we're gonna see that we have a, a scraper right here. This is gonna to help to clean off the side of the wall there and also help to accelerate the discharging of the concrete once the mixing time is complete. And for the moisture probe on the S350, we have two options here. There's a hardwired version right here and then there's also the Bluetooth version that's going to sit here in the in the pan of the mixer. It's going to rotate around with the mixer pan. Um, so that's a wireless Bluetooth configuration, and that would be equipped with the black battery pack located on the outside of the mixer uh, to make sure we're powering that. <clears throat> so here we see the, the counter current movement of the mixer pan and the spinner taking place in an animation. And let's take a look at a mix here in a second. <clears throat> so again, that angle helping to facilitate uh, the separation between the transport and the mix itself, throwing it into that spinner, uh, reducing cement balling, reducing color balling, creating highly homogenized mixes. So here we come to the water dosing section. Uh, MASA created its own water dosing system in-house that's giving the most flexible and precise water dosing based on what the recipe is going to be calling upon. So let's take a look at what the process looks like to get a little bit of a better understanding uh, of how this is working. <clears throat> so first we're depositing aggregates into the mixer. After the dry mixing time has been completed, the moisture probes that we talked about earlier is taking a humidity measurement reading and it's sending that data to the MASA Aquadose system. Here, the MASA Aquadose system is gonna take a look at what the water cement ratio is calling for in the recipe. And it's gonna be comparing that to how much moisture was found in the aggregates that you just put into your mix there. It's then gonna do the calculation saying we need X amount of more water to be able to hit the water cement ratio that we're calling for. That water is going to be dosed. And then finally, this is all going to be displayed on the, the MASA visualization system. A little bit difficult to see right here, uh, but this is water cement ratio, additional water to be added. Um, so essentially, your operator is going to be able to see these variations taking place throughout the day. Um, if you're a producer who shuts down at night, when you wake up in the morning, the first couple mixes of the day, uh, they tend to run a little bit more wet potentially as water filtrates down to the bottom of your egg bins. Um, we know that's something that happens. Also, if it rains outside, of course, your aggregate's going to be carrying more moisture in it than if it was a dry day for the last several weeks. So when we say a flexible and precise water dosing system, the aqua dose system is going to be able to accommodate for these variances throughout the day uh, from mix to mix. Of course, everything's going to be different. Uh, but it's going to be accommodating to be able to hit the water cement ratio that the recipe is calling for. So now let's take a look at some different color blending devices. <clears throat> We're going to go over both the premium multicolor blending system 
Here we see uh, the collection belt feeding directly into the face mix filling box. That's a concept Masa came out with at the last Balma. And then we're going to take a look at the easy execution device. Uh, this one is equipped with the extended silo, also has two silo flaps down below for a faster, more uniform filling of the filling box. Uh, some components that are available as an option on that front. Let's take a look at the easy execution device. <clears throat> So for a color blending system, this is going to be characterized by compact configuration. It's integrated directly into the machine silo here. How that's working is concrete is going to get deposited in several layers onto this draw plate. And as it draws backwards, concrete is going to fall into the filling box in a randomized manner, tumbling over each other, creating a thorough but randomized blend. Uh, there's going to be some load cells equipped on this device, so you get a continual reading of how much concrete is in the hopper at any given time. And this makes for a relatively simple extension of your product portfolio. Um, certainly have a lot of different markets represented here and also a lot of different producers and different philosophies. So if you're a base mix producer who's looking to, to achieve some more color blending, either do your walls, your retaining walls, uh, otherwise, on the, the top surface of your product, this could be utilized in both the base mix and the face mix side of things. So here we just take a look at the animation. We see the draw plate coming backwards. It has up to five different positions that you can move it back into. And as it pulls back, we get the randomized filling of the filling box down below and creating your different blends there. <clears throat> filling box, filling the mold. So when we take a look at the visualization system, the easy execution is going to be integrated directly into the machine. This is the, the current version, the live motion visualization. So it's going to give you a real time display of the equipment that's moving around your plant. It's going to be showing up on the operator panel. So as this draw plate moves backwards during the production process, your, your machine operator is going to see that happening on the control. Uh, it also gives you some access to some different moving components that aren't necessarily that visible from the operator control panel. Uh, that's going to allow them to intervene if anything were to happen, uh, making sure you're getting back on track, making sure that you're running your plant with the highest amount of uptime that MASA plants are known for. <clears throat> Let's take a look at the recipe management system. So you're setting the parameters for this system directly into the product recipe. So once you have a product set up, this is the way that we like to run it. A couple months down the line, when you want to go run it again, it's going to be stored. The equipment is going to know exactly what you want to do in order to produce these different color blends. And essentially, there's two different levers that you're going to be playing with to create these different looks. Uh, the first one would be the opening width of the five different positions we saw as it moved backwards. Uh, here they have the, the closed position set, the open position set, and then the five different areas in between. How far you want to go back with each different stroke would be an option up to you. And then also it's going to allow you to adjust the, the amount of delay time. So as it draws back, how much time do you want to let uh, the concrete fall into the hopper and create this randomized mixing? So playing with these two different levers is going to how it be how you achieve your different color blends. So as I mentioned, available both on the base mix section as shown here, and also on the face mix section if you'd like to go that route. <clears throat> now let's take a look at the premium multi-color multi blending system. Uh, this one was engineered to give you the most control over how you're going to feed your machine with your different color blends, and it's also going to give you the most repeatable results. So here we take a look, we have two assemblies here. We have the silo with the rotating swivel belt underneath. And then we have the collection belt that's gonna go on to either feed your hopper, otherwise in this case, directly into the filling box. <clears throat> so here we take a look, the silo, it's made out of stainless steel, helping to prevent some concrete from getting stuck in there. Uh, we have different volumes for both the main mix and the face mix as, as it requires different volumes of concrete. Um, the silo is going to be equipped with a cleaning flap that gives you a little bit better access to, to clean up the system as well as to perform maintenance. 
As the base mix is, is carrying a higher volume than the face mix, we're gonna have four load cells on that side. Only three load cells are required on the face mix side of things. And then as concrete comes down here onto this belt, it's gonna be swiveling up to 30 degrees in either direction, giving you a 60 degree radius, uh, giving you the most control over where you're gonna be placing concrete onto the collecting belt. So we take a look at this in the plant setting. Uh, we see three silos here. This is for three different color blends. As an option, you could extend the system for a four silo, giving you four different color blends. You can see that these are hanging from a steel frame. Once again, gonna be equipped with load cells. So you're getting a continuous level of how much concrete is gonna be contained within uh, these different silos. And then once again, the rotatable conveyor belt is giving you the option to place concrete in up to five different positions down here, uh, all the way across the entire width of this collecting belt. Uh, that belt is gonna be 1400 millimeters wide, the same width as a standard big board vibration table, giving you the ability to create color blends all the way across the production palette. <clears throat> so here, let's take a look at the controls a little bit. I mentioned five different positions uh, here we have number two selected. We also have the, the ability to swivel back and forth between positions. That's going to give you the most control to create these highly varied color combinations. And of course, you're going to be able to call, call upon this at any, at any time as it's configured directly into the recipe of the product. <clears throat> so when you go to, to run this product for a job at the beginning of the year, and you deliver the product and a couple months down the line at the end of the year, that same customer would like some more product delivered to their job site, you can be assured that the color blends that you're achieving at the beginning of the year is gonna be represented and repeatable later on down the road. Um, that would be the, the primary advantage of this system, giving the ultimate control over where you're placing concrete onto the collecting belt, and more importantly, how you're gonna be feeding these color blends in, into the mold. <clears throat> So here the visualization system for the premium version, it's gonna have its own independent page. Um, again, giving you the real time monitoring. Uh, you're not gonna really be able to access, you're not gonna be able to really see this from the control panel um, necessarily. So this is gonna be real time movement of the equipment. Again, making sure your operators are aware of what's going on around the plant. Um, we see the concrete levels that are, are gonna be displayed in there. Um, allowing them to intervene in a short notice if, if that's something that comes up. Um, we'll take a look at the different sequences, just, just the different controls, the different parameters that you're able to set within the system. So you have up to 10 sequences that are possible. Right here in this example, we're going to take a look at three of them. <clears throat> so here, let's just go to the first silo. We see this one's checked off. That means it's going to be depositing concrete onto the collecting belt. It's gonna be going into position one as we took a look in this previous slide. That's the positioning number. Um, there's gonna be zero delay time. So it's gonna dose immediately. Uh, and then it's gonna be depositing 50 kilograms of concrete. That's gonna be measured by a weight factor of a kilograms per second. <clears throat> um, here we get to the second silo depositing concrete into position number two. We have a three second delay time on this one. By delaying the, the time to discharge a concrete, what that's gonna allow you to do is superimpose concrete onto the collecting belt. If you wanna overlay your colors on the belt to create these different looks, uh, that's how you do it. You set it with the delay time. Again, 40, sec or 40 kilograms of concrete <clears throat> as we go on. So here we see a little something different. We're highlighted in blue. We have one and five. As we mentioned, you're able to snake this, this device back and forth. So in this configuration, we're gonna be transferring from position one, going to position five, and we're gonna be rotating in between those two until we hit our 40 kilograms of concrete that's been dosed. Uh, here we notice that this check mark's not selected on there. So we're actually gonna skip the second silo in this, in this uh, second sequence here and go directly to the third. Um, so again, this process is gonna go all the way up to 10 sequ sequences if you would like. This setting has three, and then it'll go back to the, the first sequence and continue production for as long as you're gonna be producing that, that particular product. 
Here we take a look at a video. So let's see what this looks like in a plant setting. If I can get it to go here, here we go. <clears throat> so here filling in the silos, we have a flying, flying bucket conveyor here shown. Also could be feeding it by a mud belt with an extra distribution belt that's gonna allow you to feed those three silos. Fourth silo as an option, of course. Um, we see what the sequence change looks like. Again, this system engineered to give you the most control over where you're placing concrete onto the collecting belt and eventually giving you the greatest influence of how you're gonna be feeding these colored blends into your mold. All right, the other variation of the premium alter color blending system would be the end indexing version. So instead of the swiveling belts, this one's going to be an indexing version. Uh, while the swiveling belt is directly in line with the machine, this one's going to be just off to the access there and feeding it from the side angle. Uh, still being able to deposit concrete in up to five different positions on the collecting belt, giving you a ton of control exactly where it's going to be placed on the collection belt. Um, and having a combination of these two systems, the, the swiveling belt and the indexing version would allow for independent concrete feeding. Um, if you're running, if you're a face mix producer, but you're also a producer who's running retaining wall for steps that you want these blend all the way through the products, um, these are independent. So you don't need to be running both systems uh, necessarily if you wouldn't like to. So let's take a look at what this video looks like. Again, uh, coming in from the side, access, um, still depositing concrete up into your five different positions on there. Um, and this one showcasing the fourth option to have that fourth silo there. All right, so now we'll go on to some auxiliary equipment specific to the Mossa concrete block making machine. Uh, we've got it all the way to the machine and now it's just time to fill the mold. Uh, first option would be an underhopper dosing belt. So this would be used in lieu of the silo flap. And it's gonna give you more control and a more uniform filling of the filling box. Let's just take a look at the video. Um, here you're gonna see how the product was, was deposited onto the collecting belt. This is going to be the same product coming through. We get it from this side angle. Uh, it's going to be dosing volumetrically into the filling box. And as you can see, there's only a small amount of concrete that's getting deposited, um, trying to keep a consistent filling level, trying to help to prevent your colors from preliminary blending within the filling box. <clears throat> Here we see a static example. So it's, it's just going up and depositing. You can also synchronize this movement. So as the filling box starts moving forward, you start to dose. That's another option. And here we see it come out on the wet side line, nice color blends all the way across the production palette. <clears throat> and then finally, we get to our face mix filling box. Uh, this one's going to be specific only to the face mix side of things. We have <clears throat> Both are hydraulically driven bottom sliding plate and also a hy hydraulically driven smoothening roller. So let's just uh, take a look at the animation. I think that's easier. As we come across, we get to the top of the mold. This draw plate is going to be coming backwards and the color is going to be falling directly into the mold. We're trying to prevent the pre preliminary blending of colors from too much oscillation. So falling directly into the mold as the blend has been presented in there. Here we see the smoothening roller. As it comes back, it's gonna put, it's gonna help prevent material from being pulled out at the top of the product. Um, so as it rotates backwards, we're gonna help to prevent concrete from getting smeared, preliminary smearing of your color blends. That's gonna create more vibrant colors. That's gonna create more contrasting color blends.
So there we have it. Today we reviewed uh, you know, how we're creating highly homogenized mix, how we're going to be transporting that mix to the machine, creating these different variations of color blends and some different options for feeding it once it gets into the machine, into the filling box, uh, some options to put the finishing touch in your multicolor production. Um, this is a, you know, this is kind of a topic that has varying uh, degrees of relevancy, perhaps, for, for your different markets. Um, when we look at Europe, the, the level of face mix producers there, it, it's almost guaranteed that producers are going to be running face mix. In the North American market, um, certainly starting to get developed more and more, um, but definitely different options. So if you're looking to extend your product portfolio, or if you're looking to get the most control over your production process, over these different color blends, there's some options available for you. Um, here, we're gonna take a full circle. We saw the products getting made uh, from the collecting belt. This is the same product that we saw coming out on the wet side line in the presentation, how it looks installed in the ground. Um, that's it for me today. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, <clears throat> Please don't hesitate to ask uh, down in the Q&A section there. Um, feel free to shoot us an email, give us a phone call. Happy to follow up on an individual basis on that front. I uh, did have a, uh, a question. Can you run the belt if the hopper is moving? And uh, yes, um, I think I touched on that after the fact. You can run the belt as the hopper is moving. If I understood that, that question correctly. Um, We'll go ahead and follow up, uh, just make sure that uh, we're on the same page on that one. So thank you, everyone. Happy holidays. Wishing you all the best for the rest of 2020 and into 2021.